What's going on there, guys? It is the Earthmaster here on this beautiful uh, Wednesday evening, October 20th, 2021. It's a date, about 6.20 p.m. California time. And the latest quake on the globe is going to be a 4.6 earthquake right around the China region, it looks like. A little bit of movement going on around the globe over the last 24 hours. Looking at that activity right now on the globe. Let's go ahead and check out the movement around the Canary Islands with the active volcano situation over there. Uh, this is the EMSC, CSEM.org website, the European model. A lot of earthquake activity uh, ramping up in that region uh, continuously, as it has been for quite some time now. USGS does not show the activity for some reason, but uh, it is what it is. You can see uh, movement within the last, looks like about last four hours or so, mostly around the Canary Islands, Spain region. That's the active volcano area with La Palma. And uh, further movement uh, over the last uh, six to 12 hours. See if I can get that to key up. And uh, it's just kind of kind of kicking up still, folks. We haven't seen anything major since the 4.8 last, uh, well, during yesterday. But uh, definitely still kicking up with threes and twos. And uh, still, still very active, folks, in the Canary Islands region with the active volcano there. Looking at the West Coast region, seeing some movement into Northern California. Kind of some deeper activity once again underneath. Around the subduction zone south of Eureka, 2.4 at 37.2 kilometers. Pretty deep earthquake there. A subduction zone earthquake, no doubt. And a little earthquake up here around the Redding area, 2.2 at 20 kilometers. Also some movement over here in the coastal range off the uh, Bartlett Springs fault system. It's a little system over there in the uh, coast range. 1.8 uh, east-southeast of Lake Pillsbury. Pretty shallow earthquake uh, for the uh, mountainous area there at 0.7 kilometers. Lots of movement down there at the geyser activity, or the geyser region. This is all, of course, um, hydrothermal type events. And uh, this activity, very normal for that region. A little bit of activity around the Bay Area of California, 1.1 near uh, Alameda, Alameda. And some further activity, a little swarm of activity uh, just off the San Andreas Fault there. Looks like a 3.7, the largest earthquake in this little cluster of movement uh, right right on the west side of the San Andreas Fault System. Uh, a little bit of activity down there, Fraser Park, 1.6, somewhat deep along the San Andreas Fault Zone. Ridgecrest area kind of ramping up on the return of aftershock sequences. Uh, you can see that movement on the USGS map here. Also some further activity around the Coso uh, Volcanic Range and also just to the north there, a 2.1, uh, pretty shallow earthquake. Uh, looks like negative 1.2 in that region. Also Tonopah, Nevada, uh, northwest of there. Uh, some further activity. Uh, Long Valley Super Volcano also picking in or picking up some activity. And man, hopefully you guys can't hear the yappers. Uh, neighbors just don't know how to uh, keep their dogs under control. Unfortunately, that's how it is. Of course, it is daytime, right? But still somewhat annoying. Uh, Rancho, what do we got up here? Uh, Rancho Cucamonga seeing a little bit, little bit of activity as well, some microquakes. But we are looking at a little bit of swarming uh, returning to the Salton Sea area just off the Brawley Seismic Zone to the northwest here, kind of towards the southeast corner of Salton Sea. Seeing uh, some activity kick up in the, within the last hour, the red circles. Nothing big going on at the moment, but uh, uh, this could be a start of a potential swarm in the Salton Sea area. Uh, some movement throughout the Intermountain West region, kind of uh, from the Sawtooth Fault System, Idaho, stretching across to Yellowstone National Park. You can see a little bit of scattered earthquake activity in and around the Yellowstone Super Volcano area. Nothing major going on at the moment in that region. Uh, Pacific Northwest, or the uh, northern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, fairly quiet. Throughout Japan, quiet as well. Just a little earthquake, 4.9, 83 kilometers uh, north of Guam into the um, uh, Mariana Trench. Also, uh, Papua New Guinea area, getting in on some activity and some deeper movement near the Solomon Islands. New Zealand, southward, Australia, all looking in the clear at the moment for the uh, earthquake activity. Uh, there's the earthquake in the China area, 4.6, that struck uh, just a little sh short time ago. Also some activity around the Mediterranean Sea, Turkey, and also um, up around the Russia area, looks like a 4.7 kicking up. 
the trimmer activity kind of kicking in and kicking up as uh, far as trimmer goes along the Cascadia. 230 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. It's a little increase from last night. This activity has not completely diminished, and uh, that's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of trimmer activity that we've seen um, over the last month or so. Someone asked me how many earthquakes have occurred. Uh, since the beginning of this year, and I'm kind of just going to pop up here and give you guys a, a rough estimate. Let's see here if I can bring that back up. Today's the 21st. And uh, there's quite a bit. Let me tell you, there's quite a bit of trimmer that has been kicking up in the Cascadia. Most of it, of course, was, um, well, uh, past month. 52,000 epicenters of trimmer uh, since the first of the year. Pretty large uptick. You can see the month of October up here indicating uh, most of the trimmer. It's been a very active month. Um, part of September, too. It's been a very active uh, 30 days or so of trimmer activity into the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. It comes and goes, but uh, I tell you what, this, this past 30 days has pr pretty much been a dandy. When you look at all the data here, it's been pretty clustered over the last, uh, looks like about the last half of 2020 uh, into 2021, where it's been pretty active and dense when it comes to the amount of trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. So it's ongoing. It's still continuing today and uh, def definitely keeping an eye on stuff or keeping an eye on the Cascadia uh, subduction zone. Pretty scary stuff when it comes to the potential of a mega quake along that area. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, here we go with, uh, well, not a whole lot going on, folks. A little bit of microquake activity along the northwestern part of the uh, corner, or the corner of the Yellowstone Park. And a little bit of movement looks like near Little West Thumb, but other than that, we don't see any major swarming, no magma movement, nothing uh, to really discuss when it comes to uh, activity there at Yellowstone National Park. The solar weather department looks pretty clear at the moment as well. Only a 5% chance of a sea flare. Very diminishing activity. It has been for a while, and it will continue to decline in the potential for uh, any type of geoma geomagnetic uh, storming, that is, uh, for the coming days. All in the green and uh, diminishing in the coming days. There is a little bit of coronal hole activity uh, facing away from Earth and up to the north. Little sunspots, uh, some potential sunspots around the bend. We'll see what happens and see if those develop over the next few days or so. Have a good night, folks. We will chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there. And uh, once again, thanks for uh, tuning in. Make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already. Getting up there uh, well above 63,000 uh, subscribers, I believe we're at. A little bit higher than that. And uh, we're on our way to uh, uh, hopefully see 100K. Uh, not for sure exactly when that's going to happen. But, uh, you know, I appreciate everyone subscribing out there to this channel. And uh, we will be doing a, another giveaway at 75K, 75,000 subscribers. Uh, we'll, we'll go into that detail a little bit, uh, a little bit later as we get towards 75,000. And, of course, a big one at 100K. Once we get there, that will be discussed as well. That's going to be a, kind of a, a pretty big one. All right, guys, have a good night. We will chat you a little bit later. we got some more rain coming into California, and I'm super, super duper happy about that. Uh, we need all the rain we can get. Uh, in fact, on Sunday... Sunday, it looks like we could have over two inches of rain alone on Sunday. So that's that's pretty cool. That's a, I can't say it's a drought buster because we need a lot of rain all winter long here in the West Coast. And it uh, looks like uh, so far it's a good start for October. It's starting off pretty good with the uh, rainfall. Have a good night, guys. We will chat at you a little bit later. Peace out.